tonight uh, in particular because in the past two hours there has been uh, 200 murders by the Assad regime. Mm -hmm. 200 civilians have been killed, 500 have been uh, uh, injured. Uh, the Assad regime is now using artillery shells uh, to plummet, to bomb uh, civilian buildings. Uh, so what was intolerable before, what was outrageous before, which is uh, shooting with sniper fire and so on against civilians, now the Assad regime is using artillery. And so to show our outrage, uh, we have come here, though it is late, though it is cold, uh, just to, to demonstrate our outrage against this massacre. So as a member of the Syrian National Council, what do you hope to accomplish I mean, through this conflict? I mean, We know? want to mobilize public opinion. We want to mobilize international public opinion uh, as to the fact that this is a, an unarmed civilian uprising against 48 years of dictatorship, that Syrians will no longer tolerate this, and that we want to cause the collapse of the regime. We want Assad uh, to be tried by a court of law uh, for uh, uh, for uh, crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. and so here in Washington, this is our uh, uh, this is our a small contribution to trying to mobilize uh, American public opinion. So, with what has happened with Russia today in the UN Security Council, I mean, what do you think of what has gone on in the UN and Russia's response to this? Uh... Russia is complicit to murder. Russia is supporting the murder of Syrian civilians, uh, and this is only for the uh, uh, protection of uh, Russia's uh, self-interests. It, it does not give a damn about human life, uh, Syrians in particular. Uh, and we say to Russia, uh, uh, of course the foreign minister of Russia has said that uh, a change of regime in Syria for him is unacceptable that we frankly do not give a damn what he thinks is acceptable or not. It is Syrians who will decide their destiny, not Russia. And again, Russia and its leadership are complicit to the murder of innocent, unarmed civilians. Mm -hmm. And if you could go to Obama, you know, less than two miles from here, sleeping in the White House tonight, what would you tell him? I would uh, thank him for all the support that he has given uh, the Syrian people. Uh, uh, the United States has stood by the Syrian people. Uh, the United States is pushing in the Security Council for resolutions that would condemn uh, the Assad regime. Uh, we would like to see uh, from the United States, obviously, more support uh, because uh, civilians are dying right now, and they have absolutely uh, uh, they have absolutely no shelter, no help. So they need to be protected. And if Russia ultimately kills everything that the UN is doing right now, what do you expect the international response to be You know, from countries like the United States and Qatar who have spoken out against Assad's crackdown? Well, uh, uh, when we call for an international intervention, it's not a military intervention, it's not a NATO-like uh, uh, intervention against Libya, but it is one that safeguards uh, the uh, uh, Syrian civilians, the one that gives them protection. It is the obligation of the international community to protect civilians that are under fire. Mm -hmm. And in an ideal world, how would you see the conflict resolving itself uh, at with, this point? At this point, with the collapse of the Assad regime and uh, hopefully uh, his capture and his trial by a court of law, again uh, for crimes against humanity, and for the establishment and the emergence of a free and a democratic Syria. Okay. And how do you think that will be accomplished? This is going to be accomplished by the collapse of the regime, and the opposition has already put together a coalition of forces under the umbrella of the Syrian National Council, uh, which will uh, manage uh, the state uh, in an interim period, a transitional period towards democracy in which political parties can form and in which they can compete in a parliament. And how do you plan to reach that transitional period? We are doing everything we can to cause the collapse of the Assad regime. Thus far, there are many states that have imposed uh, economic and uh, diplomatic uh, sanctions uh, that have imposed yeah, sanctions against massive. Syria. And in Syria, of course, there is the emergence of the defecting soldiers from the army uh, that are now beginning to protect the civilians. So, I mean, you know, I've, I've heard that there's a number of, I mean, a large percentage of the, of the Syrian people that still support the regime. That's not true. 
It's false. It's false. <laughs> a large number of Syrian people want the collapse of the regime. There certainly are supporters of the regime, and these are the cronies, uh, those who have vested interests uh, uh, in the upper echelons of the business elite, a very corrupt business elite that has been in cahoots with the Assad regime, or put differently, that the Assad regime created. And so uh, the uh, uh, proportion of Syrians that want to collapse uh, the collapse of the Assad regime, I think, are a, a overwhelming majority. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I'm assuming you want to, you, you would like the regime to be replaced with a democracy. Yes. But in that democracy, what type of political parties do you think will emerge in a post-Assad Syria? The, uh, all the political parties that would be established by the people themselves. And so you have a wide array of political parties from the far left to the far right. Mm -hmm. And it is up to the Syrian people uh, to decide which political parties they want and which political parties to represent them in parliament and uh, for them uh, uh, ultimately to decide uh, what their government looks like.